Joe Zikas from YoChicago.com. I'm at the Unity Temple in Oak Park this morning with Jim, who's, a, who's a design slinger. <laughs> and Jim is going to take us on a tour of the Unity Temple and teach us how to photograph it and how to take great photographs. Well, that's my hope. That's what I'm hoping to do because um, I honestly believe that everybody has the potential to take a really great picture. What I hope that I can help you see today is that maybe sometimes the picture that you thought was the only picture you could take is not the only option. I also believe that no matter what your circumstances are, we are in a building that has a fair amount of natural light right now, but not a ton. Even if we were in this building and it was completely overcast, I t I'm telling you, you could take a picture in here and be very happy with it. Even if you don't have perfect exposure. Because the other thing that is really important when you're taking a photograph is how you actually frame that picture. Some of you may have been taking tons of pictures for a really, really long time. So you already have a sense of, well, if I move the camera like this, or I move the camera like this, or I move the camera like this. Um, but for a lot of people, they feel that they have to come into a space like this, and it's like, I have to take a picture of the entire sanctuary at Unity Temple. That's a great picture. But there's so much that's going on in here that sometimes the best photograph that you will take of a piece of architecture is the smallest detail because that will tell the biggest story and you get the biggest bang for your buck out of it. What I would like to do with all of you today is take you on a tour of Unity Temple. I'll tell you a little bit about the history of the building. I will tell you how I come into a place and start to photograph it. Then it's up to you. 1909, that's when the building it was actually consecrated. It was a long project. Wright really pushed himself into a new direction in this building. This is, for me, one of the best buildings that Frank Lloyd Wright ever designed. Because I just feel that there's so much that happens in this place that you could come back here over and over and over again and find out something that you've never seen before. It's always something that is there are new discoveries to be found here all the time. When I come into this space, since I'm down here on the ground floor, the first thing I'll do is actually look around for good angles. And I know that sounds kind of obvious. Angles have such an impact on the way the audience is going to see the image that you photograph. So when I'm in here, I'm looking for that angle. You turn on your camera, you look up, wow, this looks really great, and you snap it. I have just taken a great overview of the entire room. I'm looking around and I think, wow, those light fixtures back in that corner, they're really dynamic. They really add such visual interest to this space. So I'll stand back here, I look up, and I take a shot, and now I have another option. That picture may tell whoever you're showing the photo to more about Unity Temple than the big auditorium picture. What I'd like you to do is look through your camera lens and do exactly what I just did. Take a photo so that you can get an overview of most of the room. And after you do that a couple of times, look into the corner Watch what's happening where those lamps are coming down into the space. The way the balcony meets that pier that's in the corner, plus all the woodwork that you see going on back here. If you take a picture of this, you have all kinds of visual information happening here. There's the color of the upholstery. There's the way the bench seat comes out. There's the green of the philodendron. There's the way the wall moves in this direction. Those are all just things that become apparent to you the more you take pictures. But again, if you just opt to do it, when you take that picture into Photoshop and ready to print it out, you'll be surprised at what you're going to see. And you'll say, oh my gosh, I didn't even see that when I was there taking that photo. 
I have come to understand how the sun moves more than I would ever have thought I would and probably more than I want to know. This time of year is a really tough time of year at this time of day. We are now, all, you know, it's the longest day of the year. The sun is at the highest point in the sky. This is not the best light. In the summer, the best light is when the sun is coming up and when the sun is going down. That's really great light. Winter time in Chicago, if it's a clear day, beautiful time of year to take pictures um, because the sun is far enough south. You have a shorter day though, so I can't tell you how I have to run around <laughs> trying to make sure that I get to some place at the right time before the sun disappears. Even though today is white light, which is not a great light to photograph in, there's still every opportunity to take a picture. So one of the best angles of this building is from out here on Kenilworth. So why don't we start out there. On a day like today, probably the tree will help act as a scrim. The, the sky behind me is so white that the tree can be a nice silhouette to help block out some of that white sky. The sun is in a good place though to at least cast some light on down onto the side of the building. I can't even tell you how many things you could take from here. You do a close up with the flowers shooting up into the detail of the piers. You get all of the architecture. Look at all the things that are happening right up in here at the, at the roof line. Use your zoom, change your meter settings if you're not on auto. Bend down, take pictures horizontally, take pictures vertically, tilt your camera. Concrete was chosen for the exterior because they only had so much money. They only had about $45,000 to build this church. At the time, it was not unusual for a congregation to pay upwards of $100,000 to build a house of worship. So he chose concrete, but was going to use brick inside, believe it or not. granite from the outside inside. Exactly. So the interior, all this plaster that was in the sanctuary here, would have all been brick. It was too costly. There are actually renderings of the interior of the building that are done, where everything is done in brick. And it was too costly, so it shifted to plaster. The aggregate that's on the outside, believe it or not, he actually wanted to use a red pebble stone that changed in value as you went from the bottom to the top. So that the bottom, the uh, aggregate at the bottom of the building would be a darker red, and as you moved up, the aggregate would lighten as you moved to the sky. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> um, when, the, when the congregation hired him, the building was supposed to have been completed in two years, and they were supposed to be here in 1907. Finally, in 1908, this portion of the building was ready, and this is where the congregation first worshipped was crammed into this space. This was meant to be the meeting hall. This is where they could have um, kindergarten. This is where they could have social activities. The sanctuary wasn't ready yet. When the sanctuary was ready, we went through that whole eating issue that I mentioned. So they still couldn't worship over there, and they had to come back over here. And finally, in 1909, in September of 1909, the entire complex was consecrated and open for business. There's great light in here now. People actually have been known to lay on the floor and shoot straight up into the skylight. So if you feel the urge, lay on the floor and shoot straight, straight up into the skylight. Again, one thing that you have here, there's so many visually interesting things happening in this space. 